after defeating a rampaging guerrilla monster in the city. Rioter discovers a pistol weapon that was dropped as a reward for defeating the guerrilla with just one strike from his fist. The appearance of this pistol was unexpected in Rioter's world, and normally, wild monsters should not drop any items. However, due to Rioter's unique skill, these events occurred, and he didn't refuse the gift he received. As the days pass, Rioter heads to the Nihonium dungeon as usual to try out his new weapon. Before venturing in, he checks his status to see if there have been any changes or potential improvements that might not be visible on the status board. On the second floor of Nihonium, he aims the revolver-shaped weapon at a zombie. He briefly thinks that the bullets he obtained might have dropped his items from monsters outside the dungeon. Meanwhile, Emily, who is hunting carrots on the second floor of Tellulu, is having difficulty dealing with agile slimes. Rioter appears just in time to help her by shooting bullets at the slimes. Later, they sit down to enjoy Emily's homemade lunch, which Rioter has been eagerly anticipating. Emily is curious about Rioter's unique weapon, as she has never seen a model like it before, and she suspects that only Rioter possesses it. Rioter explains that the revolver is exclusive to him due to his B-rank adventurer status in the guild granting him the freedom to explore dungeons and face the monsters without fear of being easily defeated. He is delighted with his new weapon, as it allows him to conduct experiments during solo explorations. He realizes that the carrots meant for Eve remained untouched, suggesting that she might be busy hunting something else, and that decide to save them for her unexpected arrival. Rioter enjoys his lunch inside the dungeon, and Emily offers him tea to accompany his meal. They continued their exploration of the Tellula dungeon, entering the third floor, which had a setting reminiscent of ruins, quite different from the first and second floors. Emily explained that the third floor was inhabited by a slime creature called Cacro Slime, and the drop item from defeating it was a pumpkin. As expected, Rioter's skill effects significantly influenced the quality and size of the drops, just like on the first and second floors. Rioter noticed that the monsters on the third floor were roach-shaped slimes and immediately suggested avoiding this floor. However, Emily's behavior suddenly changed when she saw the roach-shaped slime. She turned into something akin to a psychopath, mercilessly attacking the slime while laughing wickedly, and indeed, the roach slime dropped a pumpkin. Rioter urged Emily to return to the second floor and resume hunting for carrots, as he didn't want to see her in that psychopathic state again. But as they were about to ascend to the second floor, Emily suddenly stopped in her tracks. Rioter realized that a group of roach slimes had emerged from the ruins on the third floor. Emily counted more than thirty of them and seemed to have lost her humanity completely, acting like a deranged person. Panicking, Rioter couldn't bear to witness Emily in such a state and decided to eliminate the roach slimes with his weapon. He pondered whether he had ever focused so intently on something in front of him during his lifetime, but he couldn't recall doing so. After dealing with the roach slimes, the large pumpkins began to scatter on the ground. Their size was too massive to carry all of them back to the town. Emily, back in her psychopathic mode, was ready to attack the roach slimes again if they reappeared. Frightened by Emily's terrifying expression, Rioter quickly calmed her down to prevent her from going further. Just then, the pile of pumpkins collapsed as Eve arrived, and Rioter was buried under the debris of a large pumpkin as Eve asked for her share of carrots for the day. Emily, who had prepared the carrots for Eve, invited her to take them from her bag. Rioter felt grateful that Eve's arrival meant she could assist in carrying the pumpkins out of the dungeon. Upon reaching the town, Rioter and Emily sold some of the pumpkins they had brought from the dungeon to the Adventurer's Guild. They planned to retrieve the rest that were left at the dungeon's entrance. However, upon their return, they found the pumpkins had been devoured by roach slimes that had suddenly appeared. This triggered Emily's psychopathic mode again, and she went on a rampage to eliminate the roach slimes. Rioter tried to help, but he was taken by surprise as his bullets had run out. He couldn't shoot anymore for the time being. With no other choice, Rioter had to deal with the roach slimes on his own to save and restore Emily back to her usual self. After defeating them all, Emily apologized for not being able to control herself when facing the roach slimes, and thankfully, Rioter managed to bring her back to her normal state. Suddenly, 
the drop item from the roach slimes changed to bullets after they were defeated outside the dungeon. Confused by this phenomenon, Rioter went back to the Adventurer's Guild to ask Arisa about what he found out. Arisa explained the drop items from monsters defeated outside the dungeon were unprotected and could be taken by other monsters, unlike inside the dungeon where they reappeared after being defeated. However, Rioter's unique skill allowed him to create drop items from monsters outside the dungeon. Intrigued by this discovery, Rioter considered experimenting with his ability by luring monsters with drop items obtained inside the dungeon and placing them outside to observe the results. As he was contemplating this theory, Arisa, who had an evident crush on Rioter, asked him out for dinner at a nice restaurant in town. But Rioter, too preoccupied with his experiment, immediately left without realizing Arisa's intentions, leaving her somewhat disappointed, assuming her invitation was outright rejected. Rioter began his experiment by placing a carrot as bait, hoping that a green slime would appear before him so he could quickly defeat it. However, instead of a slime, Eve appeared and took the carrot. Rioter felt disappointed that his bait didn't attract the desired monster. When most of the carrots were consumed by Eve, Rioter gambled on the last one, hoping for a green slime to appear. Fortunately, the green slime did appear, and Rioter swiftly shot it, receiving a number of bullets from the defeated slime when it was outside the dungeon. This confirmed his theory. He then tried the same with the HP updrop item found on the first floor of Nihonium, but it disappeared immediately when thrown outside. Additionally, when he threw a skeleton outside the dungeon, it vanished too. Curious about this, Rioter asked Arisa for an explanation. After being teased by Arisa's advances, Rioter left to test his theory directly. When he arrived at Nihonium, he applied his theory to a nearby skeleton, throwing it outside and defeating it. To his delight, a new drop item appeared, frozen bullets, confirming the success of his theory. Rioter then tried using the frozen bullets on a nearby dead tree near the Nihonium dungeon and practiced combo attacks with Emily in the Tellula dungeon. Emily was impressed with Rioter's latest discovery, as obtaining the frozen bullets required extra effort. When they were about to return to the town, it started pouring heavily outside the dungeon. When the weather became favorable, they walked back towards the town. There, they encountered an elderly man and a young woman who were arguing because the elderly man's belongings had fallen into a gorge filled with expensive and uniquely scented perfumes that were highly sought after in the city. The young woman was an adventurer tasked with escorting the old man, but due to the rain, their card ended up at the bottom of the gorge. The elderly man became uncontrollable and angry, seemingly possessed by a monster called Feminine, which resembled a masked spirit. Rioter quickly defeated the Feminine. The adventurer woman intended to descend into the gorge to defeat the Feminine's mother, who was at the bottom, and instructed Rioter and Emily to take the old man to the town. However, Rioter refused, as he didn't want the adventurer woman to become a victim of the feminine, and he also reminded her of his past when he couldn't help his junior at the office. He was determined to assist the adventurer woman with Emily's help. They shot frozen bullets toward the card of perfumes controlled by the feminine, freezing everything. Emily successfully defeated the feminine with her large hammer. After returning to the town, Emily checked her level and abilities which had increased to level 20 after defeating the Feminine. She thanked Rioter for helping her and hoped for more positive outcomes in the future.